recording. So you should see my screen. Yeah. So well, welcome everybody to the Seabor interim um, 2018. We skipped the 2017. Yeah, you have some links here in the slide. Oh, I should also post it to the chat. The minutes link is not right. Okay, let me post the right one. <laughs> um, I'm a bit slow today, I'm sorry. This is the right one, and I will fix it in the slides, but yep. Oh, thanks, Karsten. You also posted it. <laughs> you were quicker. Okay. So link to the minutes there. Uh, if you could uh, put in your, um, write your name. Uh, this is a note well, this is an ITF meeting, the note well applies. Um, so I will be taking minutes. So I will ask you, especially you Kasten, to uh, lead the discussion in the, for the next documents, because I will be trying to capture it in the minutes. Okay. okay. And this is the agenda for today. So we have a short working group update um, with some sad news and some more happy news. Um, well, then we will talk about the document, uh, working group document status, especially the OI tags and the uh, new proposal dictionaries and any other business that we want to discuss. So this is um, really hard, but yeah. So as I'm sure you, you all know, uh, my co-chair Jim Shad has passed away at the beginning of the month. Um, this is a picture from March, 2017 at the ITF. I really like this. I had to go into the archives and to find it. And I, I hope that I, I'm not breaking any um, copyright or anything by posting it here. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say a few words. Jim has been a pillar of the ITF for a very long time, and he's been, um, he has been contributing for 23 years. I actually checked, and the first, I, the first draft he ever submitted was in March 1998, which is insane for me. Um, and he has published 29 RFC, and there are still a couple more that will um, be published uh, to his name. And uh, his main expertise was in the security area, as I'm sure you all know. He started as a Microsoft employee and continued contributing as an individual, even after he retired and opened his winery, August Sellers. And um, he decided to keep working on the ITF topics for his mental stimulation and the challenge of it. And this was absolutely his passion. Uh, he was not paid to do it. Um, yeah, Jim was patient and helped a lot of people, um, including me, to get into the ITF ways of working and always gave great feedback. Um, I know that many people here have seen his um, great reviews, very to the point. And um, yeah, Jim agreed to co-chair this working group Seabor in March uh, 2019. And he has helped progress um, our working group, doc working group documents forward. Mm. And even before that, his participation and reviews have been instrumental to progress a lot of uh, the working group documents. So, um, yeah, he will be missed a lot. So, and also I want to say, if any of you want to get in contact with James' family, let me know and I will forward you um, his brother's address if you haven't seen it already. And um, Barry, do you want to add anything? I thought I would, Francesca, but you've done so well. I'd really add just that I miss him. So I I don't feel like I don't feel like uh, my words could could uh, make him justice, but 
Yeah, I would like to take a minute of silence for Jim now. Okay, um, yes, so let's move on to the next topic, unless anybody else wants to say anything. Okay, next. So I know that we are not really in the mood for celebrating right now, especially, um, especially now, but I'd like to congratulate the authors and the whole working group for progressing 7049 49 bis. It's now since, um, this is the first time that we talk since it was approved by the ISG. So it's now in the RFC editor um, state, so which means it's undergoing final internal review before Auth48. And uh, so big congratulations, and I hope we'll get to celebrate in person soon and when the RFC is published. And now to the next topics uh, in the agenda. Or oh, before we talk about the OIT tags, um, I just want to mention that uh, I noticed uh, when I was looking at the documents that um, the uh, Seaboard date tag is in the RC editor queue and it's in Auth48 and it's been Auth48 for 44 days. Uh, but I don't really no more than that. So Mike is not here, but I, I guess I'll have to check with him. Okay. So you, you get CC'd on all the Earth 48 messages? I don't, uh, or is that just the, the AD? I don't I, know. I'm checking that now. Um, so we're talking about seaboard date tag, right? Yes. Um, Mike has, yeah, Mike just replied on the 22nd, so a week ago, that he's been on vacation and offline and whatever, and that he has some off 48 responses due, and he's working his way through that. Okay. And thanks Frank, for yeah. you, you are CC'd on that. So. Okay, yes. Good. I have missed a lot of emails, so. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, um, then next we can talk about the OIT tags. So we have an update from Karsten. Yeah, let me, and... let me just mention that the, um, the day tag has been in Auth48 for 11 days. I think you said 44, but that's probably the total time in, in the RFC editor queue. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Um, so it's, it's not quite My mistake. <laughs> it's not quite bad. as bad. Yeah, no, I was checking and I saw that and I was uh, very surprised. It does yeah. say Auth48 for 44 days in the, in oh, the really? documents. Yeah. No, no. When, when you look in the data tracker, it tells you that it's in the RFC editor queue for 48 days. Okay. And then yeah. it tells you it's in Auth48. Right. Really okay. So to, that, was, that was my mistake for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the, great. The, the data RFC tracker has a queue summary that shows you the time in the substate. Um, but yeah. it's, yeah, anyway. So that was, uh, yeah, I so quickly I, I checked them. Trap already <laughs> once as well. So I will pay attention yeah, to that. It. It's good to know. Yes. Can okay. you click on the link? Sorry? 
Can you click on the link? Uh, uh, you mean for the um, yes. this one? Yes. yes. So okay. Can you see? Is it yes. big enough? Good. Well, con uh, Command Plus always helps, but uh, um, yeah. So we we haven't done much <clears throat> with the document in the last month. Um, but actually, what uh, what we need to do is rather limited, as far as I can see. Uh, so we we were in September. We were trying to find out the level of complexity we wanted to have for for tag factoring, and I think what is uh, currently in in Dash O One um, is the right level of complexity. So if uh, everybody agrees with that, um, I think we we are done. We just have to. Uh, delete the editor's note. And then I have a small number of editorial changes that, that are on GitHub, uh, but, but I haven't shown anyone because they are really small editorial changes. But while doing that, I noticed that uh, section 9.1 uh, contains some security considerations about conversion between uh, basic encoding rules and dotted decimal. And we don't really need these anymore because Dr. Decimal doesn't play a role uh, in the document anymore. So my suggestion would be to uh, delete this section. It, it's, usually we don't delete stuff from, from the security considerations because it's good to have those security considerations, but this is now really out of uh, uh, scope. And we already have a warning in the third paragraph of section nine uh, of, of the security considerations that uh, points out the general uh, problem, even if it is out of scope. So these are the two things I, I would uh, propose, apart from my small editorial changes. Delete the editor's note in section 5, delete section 9.1. And uh, then uh, I think essentially the, the only way we can get some attention is to go for working group call. So that would be my proposal uh, once uh, I have generated a dash or two uh, based on the above changes. Uh, we should go for working group last call and try to get the reviews that we need. Okay, do you think you can submit an update? Um, um, today. Before, oh, today, okay. I was thinking before submission deadline, which is Monday. Yes. So but that's deleting great. stuff is, is relatively easy. So <laughs> yeah, that. that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, and then we can start working group last call. I don't know if uh, two weeks the the default would be good enough. I don't know if we want to also forward to other uh, working group or. No, we just do it, yeah, to get yeah, more can... more reviews. Because I'm noticing that um, um, our working group is quite, uh, it's always the usual suspects. So it would be good to get a bit more people involved anyway. Yeah. So th this is kind of a subject uh, meta or domain specific draft. So people who know about OIDs uh, should be the one who read this. And uh, that, that goes beyond the usual suspects in the working group. Yeah. But th there is no IETF mailing list that, that concerns itself with uh, ASN1 object yeah. Yeah. IDs. So I, I'm not sure who to send it to except for specific individuals. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just, just foreseeing um, a possible issue that might not even happen. If we get enough reviews with the working group plus call, the, all of this is... Uh, we don't need to bother about, but yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, we will wait for the update then. Uh, what you said makes sense. I don't know if anybody else wants to, has had time to see uh, the update, but otherwise go ahead and, and do the changes. But you had a month to look at it, so. <laughs> oh, uh, no, I mean like the email this morning, or when was it? Uh, no, the, the Dasho one was on uh, September 30th. Yes. I submitted that right after our last uh, interim. Yes. Yeah, no, I mean like the, these particular modifications that you wanted to do. 
yeah. or that yeah that you propose to do so karsten um this is ira a suggestion i would uh forward the working group last call to uh sacum and rats lists because you will capture a variety of people who do do care about lights that's a very good suggestion yes thanks ira yes we'll do that Okay. I'm writing down notes, so I think we can move to the next topic in the agenda. Uh, which is the new proposal dictionaries and you have slides for this. Yes, thank you. I don't know if you want to present yourself, but no, go go ahead. Uh, it takes a long time for my laptop to present slides, so okay. Yeah, so um, th that's another area where we we will be missing Jim's input. Um, <clears throat> so the the current state of the discussion is that uh, we we had a proposal which is the dash zero zero, which which is kind of rounded out and and. Uh, uh, simple, but then we had a number of proposals to to uh, go be beyond that, and now we have to sort out which of these proposals we actually uh, want to go with. So next slide. Um, the the um, the basic idea is that uh, we want to put something into CBAR that that improves the coding efficiency without going uh, full out into compression land because compression means uh, you cannot use the data without decompressing them. And the idea behind packing is that we um, just do things in a way that uh, the, the data can be operated on uh, in the packed uh, state. So that, that's the, the basic new idea. And that, that's the, the guiding principle. So we don't want to do things where, where it suddenly becomes hard uh, to, to use the data in, in packed uh, state. Next slide. So th th there are two uh, uh, mechanisms that uh, packing provides. Uh, one is item sharing, because we often have data items that are used in, in more than one place. Um, these could be simple things like strings uh, but often they are also small arrays or, or maps with one or two uh, key value pairs um, and so on. And uh, it, it makes sense to use structure sharing uh, to uh, encode this, uh, to encode such an item once and all the other places just, uh, or the usage uh, using places just point to that um, shared item. So in the pack structure, we put such a shared item into the item sharing array. And then in the places where the, the item would have been, instead there is a reference uh, to that entry in, in the item sharing array. Next slide. So th this is uh, already kind of the, the 80% um, uh, aspect of it, and there is a there is a twenty percent aspect uh, that comes from prefix sharing. In in the examples uh, I looked at, uh, we often have, uh, for instance, lots of URIs in in a data structure, and these URIs all start the same way. Uh, so it makes sense to be able to share prefixes. And recently, people have had examples where it actually makes sense to share suffixes. So let, let's call the whole thing ethics uh, sharing. If, if your linguistics are up to speed, you know that an ethics is either a prefix or a um, su suffix. So I uh, use uh, that here. 
And uh, the idea is to do this uh, in a rather similar way. So we have arrays that contain uh, prefixes or, or suffixes. And in the places where, where a copy is needed, uh, these are referenced together with the, the, the rest. So for, for the prefix, that would be a, a suffix. And for the suffix table, that would be a prefix uh, that is uh, um, put together with that uh, reference. Dash zero zero only defined this for byte and text strings. And uh, it, it seems that there are good examples why you want to do this to arrays and maps as well. So, so from, from a specification perspective, that's a trivial change. Of course, from an implementation as, uh, perspective, it gets interesting. Next slide. So this is what is in, in dash zero zero. The, the overall structure uh, of a packed item is uh, an array, a tagged array that has the rump. So the, the data item uh, that uh, uh, has all the, the references to uh, shared items and to uh, items with uh, prefixes and uh, oh, at that time not yet suffixes and pre with prefix prefixes in them. And then we have a prefix table and uh, an item uh, table. And the prefix table is an array embedded into that array and the item a table is just the continuation of that array, saving one byte, which is maybe not that important, but uh, yeah, one byte is one byte. So that's the, the existing structure. Next slide. And trying to, to generalize this a bit, uh, we found that maybe this structure is a little bit too inflexible. Uh, so we could uh, separate out the, the two major components of uh, Pact. One is the definition of uh, reference, of referencing uh, structures. So these reference can be used in place of a data item, and they point to an, a shared item, or they point uh, to a shared affix uh, plus uh, contain some data that is combined uh, with the, the affix. And for both kinds of pointing, we need an efficient namespace. Uh, so these, these are essentially small uh, numbers. And it turns out if, if uh, th there are a lot of things that can be referenced, in, which occurs in particular if, you are have, if you're using an external dictionary, um, then you have to uh, make sure that you put the frequently, frequently reference stuff into the good pieces of the namespace and the less frequently referenced parts in, into further uh, pieces of the namespace. Um, in the current proposal, uh, items, prefixes, and, and uh, maybe in the future suffixes are separate. Um, th there, is, there are a few examples I have found where you actually want something in both places. And well, if you want it in both places, you can make it a shared item. So it, it's uh, not like that. That is not supported. It, it just uh, requires uh, a pointer from the prefix table to the uh, item table or from the suffix table to the item table. So it, it's a couple bytes spent there, but it, it's not a, a big problem. That's why we are using separate namespaces there. So that's one half, the, the referencing of these namespaces. And the other part is building the tables that populate the namespaces. So in the existing proposal, the, the tables are just there in, in the uh, packed uh, item. And the proposal was to add external dictionaries. Um, so um, the, the fun part will be uh, to control how the namespaces merge. So if you only have an external dictionary, that's easy. Uh, but if you want to have an external dictionary together with some local data or even multiple external uh, dictionaries, then, then you have to do some uh, work. Uh, so we need to find out how much uh, generality we actually want to support there. Uh, for now, I'm, I'm assuming that we want to uh, support all, all, all these kinds of combinations, multiple external dictionaries and, and plus a local uh, dictionary, but maybe there there is a, 
reason to restrict that or to define a profile that, that only has a single uh, source for, for the tables. Next slide. So the, for the namespacing, um, I think, is already done pretty much right in dash 00. zero. Uh, so the, the item references uh, use uh, a mixture of uh, simple values and a single byte tag uh, for uh, creating reference, for addressing the namespace. And the prefix references, and, and in the future, that will be true for the suffix references as well. Um, they um, use tags they actually reuse the, the the same tag that is used for um, item references that, that can be discussed but that, that's a mi minor issue um, but the more important part is that the tags uh, also create uh, some different uh, spaces uh, uh, one point uh, one plus one one plus two one plus four of different uh, uh, sizes um, so we, we have to reserve some part of uh, namespaces. And, and given the, the importance of this uh, proposal, we probably can justify reserving a significant part. So four sevenths out of the remaining simple values, for instance. Um, but I think that, that's not the part that uh, where the current discussions are at. So we can always adjust that later. Next slide. Um, so the the when we build these tables, um, we cannot simply just concatenate uh, the the lists from the various sources because the position in the table is relevant. So what was considered less important uh, within uh, one source also needs to be less important in in the combined uh, table. And I'm proposing to just identify those buckets that we had in the previous slide. So we have four buckets for items and three buckets each for prefixes and, and suffixes. And uh, we just combine these tables based on the buckets. Um, so um, yeah, again, again, if, if you only import uh, a dictionary or use a locally defined table, the, the combination of course is trivial, but uh, when these are combined, then the sequence becomes uh, important. Next slide. Um, another question that we have to solve is uh, how do we actually reference these dictionaries? And um, one uh, mechanism, of course, is URIs. So very similar to the way X5U works in, in uh, the COSI. Uh, environment, we would uh, support URIs for both identifying uh, and locating um, some dictionary. Uh, we could also support hashes, which are only identifying uh, dictionaries, but are not locating them. So you would have to know from context uh, which of these, uh, uh, where you find the uh, item that has been hashed here. And we could also provide registered uh, dictionaries, which again would uh, identify them and uh, would also locate them if the the implementation is aware of uh, the recent uh, registrations. So registered dictionaries, of course, have the advantage that the numbers can be very small. We probably will never have more than 100 uh, registered uh, dictionaries, so we, we can do this with a single byte. Uh, while the other references are can be pretty large. So any useful hash uh, will be like 32 bytes and, and your, your eyes also tend to be uh, 10 or 20 uh, bytes. Uh, so th these will kind of uh, go against the, the uh, advantage of using an external dictionary in the first place. Next slide. So the, the, I think it, this is all pretty much fleshed out. Uh, the, the details, of course, have to be written up. Um, but um, the, the remaining question is, how do we do, how do, we do the actual uh, combining? And uh, I would uh, uh, propose to use Brendan's uh, proposal, who said that when you are at the end of the table, then you just use the next table. 
uh, except do this per bucket and, and not uh, per table. Uh, so that, that means uh, a bucket might overflow and you might have to put it uh, at the end of the next higher uh, bucket. Uh, but usually that, that should be a relatively simple uh, operation. Um, this requires a defined sequence, so you know uh, which sources occupy which part of the namespace. Um, we could uh, uh, nail down that sequence in, in the document, or we could simply um, define the sequence implicitly by the structure that uh, provides the values and the references for the sources for the tables. So that's as far as I, I got. Um, I think that that is a way forward that can uh, work. Um, in the end, we will have uh, some complexity for the cases where we actually combine uh, dictionaries or dictionaries and local tables. But I think that complexity is justified for those applications that need it. Um, and in other cases, we may just want to uh, refer to a global table uh, like we, we originally did for signaling compression 20 years ago. Uh, so that there is one global table that, that everyone uses and, and that is registered. And uh, so we have a very simple uh, scheme here that, that is very easy to uh, implement for a specific application. Yeah, the next step will be to write this up in, in the next version of, of the draft. But uh, before we do this, uh, I wanted to hear whether people have uh, ideas that, that uh, could uh, simplify this or make it more useful, more general. Um, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to start writing this only next week because the term is starting here right now. And um, we still have a lot of organizational administrative issues with uh, doing uh, this in, in the pandemic era. Uh, so it's an interesting week. So it seems to me in the, that you brought up several, um, several points that you'd like to, like you have a suggestion on, on which one to go for, but you like to hear other people's opinion. Should we go through them or um, if anybody has any opinion on any of those, obviously we can um, hear that. Yeah, I think this may need some thinking. Um, so um, you may want to look at, at the slides after the, the meeting and we may want to point other people to the recording of this meeting to, to find out what's going on. Yes. Um, so I, I'm not sure that we can do a lot uh, today, but we, we may get some knee jerks. So um, if there are knee jerks, uh, please go ahead. My, my, my only uh, strong uh, reaction was to, to the Ayana where, yeah, I, I agree with you, Karsten, that uh, Ayana register dictionaries, like that would be my preference. Or it makes more sense. Yeah, we could uh, actually add an indirection here um, by uh, making the, the way these dictionaries are referenced a tag. So people could be defining their own tags for sets of IANA registered dictionaries. Um, I think that that adds, ah, wow. <laughs> adds, adds very, very little complexity in, in practice, uh, but it might save us the effort to actually uh, come up with the most wonderful registry that, that one can imagine, uh, because different applications will need different registries here. Mm-hmm. Oh, Michael was missing everything. That's too bad. Michael <laughs> certainly has an opinion on all these issues. Hi, Hi Michael. Um, well, I, I can't say that I was missing them. I, I was, you know, at a doctor's appointment. Um, so I don't know if I was missing them. Um, 
but yeah, I bet I do, but I don't know what the point was. So I'll read your slides and watch the recording. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was noting down things. Um, then I so from, think, from, yes. From a timing point of view, um, I won't make the deadline for, for with this. Uh, That's draft, what I so understood, yes. Will be in, in GitHub for a while, but uh, I think I can submit at the start of 109. Okay. Um, I don't know if we if there is any use in putting it on the agenda um, for one, 109 since, I mean, it would be good to have uh, um, something to practical to discuss, like a draft um, before before we, we put it on the agenda. But if we can get some uh, discussion in the mailing list, then we can definitely reserve a spot. Um, if there is no progress, then other than what we have said today, then I don't, uh, I'm not sure there is a lot of, it's very useful to, to put it on the agenda. Do you agree with that or? Yes, it, it definitely should be written up and people should be voicing their opinions or we won't have anything to discuss. Mm. Um, okay, I will keep this in mind for the agenda. Um, then I think we can move on. So uh, next on the agenda was any other business. Um, so one of these business is uh, ITF 109. So we talked about this might go on the agenda then, and we um, definitely want to talk about the result from the uh, working group last call for the OIDS document. Um, what else? I really would like to resurrect the uh, time tag. Um, so we have run into another case where we may need this uh, uh, tag. So the, the COSWIT people are a little bit unhappy with the floating point uh, stuff, but I, I don't know yet what exactly the requirements are there. So um, I, I'm just sensing that the time tag may be uh, the, the 1001 uh, time tag may be the, the best way to handle that uh, set of requirements. So okay. maybe we should look at that document with a fresh look. Sounds good. Um, are you planning on, uh, is there a, a new submission coming or it's just a re like uh, restarting the discussion? I, I don't remember if there was any um ongoing reviews or well th this was done at a time when we weren't really chartered to do this kind of thing yeah um so uh, i think uh, uh maybe we can use the next two weeks and and uh, look into our various uh, cbo related projects and see where where the the current vocabulary for time and date is insufficient and uh, go into the discussion with an assessment of whether the, the time tag document is making some progress there or not. Sounds good. Okay. Um, I think that's it for, for this point of business. Um, Barry, did we want to talk about? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I need to find a co-chair to uh, to take this forward with Francesca. Um, as I thought about, um, we we talked about the possibility of leaving her as the only chair, which uh, might be suitable, but I tend not to like that 
And I think there's a reasonable chance that Francesca might be my replacement as AD, uh, which reminds me to remind everybody to please make nomcom comments about the candidates. Um, but anyway, so if any of you have a good idea of who might be a suitable chair for working with Francesca, ideally somebody with less chair experience whom Francesca can help bring up, I would like to hear it. So um, please send me email and let me know of any suggestions you have. Um, that's it. Thanks, Barry. Yes, or if you want to volunteer yourself, that's also yes. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? Letting people go through their list of leftover issues. But no, it seems like we're done for today. Oh, just one more thing. We we had one uh, me meeting scheduled uh, or interim scheduled for um, November 11th, I believe. Um, and the plan was to actually schedule the meeting and then possibly uh, um, cancel it. So I think it if uh, I think it makes sense to cancel it, but unless anybody has objections to it. I'll add that that, that would be an excellent choice. The, the IESG prefers not to have interim meetings the week before the IETF meeting. And yeah. they actually, we actually talked about that. And I said that if, if you guys really thought it was important to have a prep meeting, that we should leave it on the schedule. But as of next IETF, you won't be allowed to schedule it. That okay. Week. So, so Good if, to you're, know. If, if you're up for canceling it, everybody will be happy with that way. Yeah. Um, Francesca, this is Ira. Um, yes. About scheduling. Um, after I think it was after IETF 108, this biweekly shifted by a week, which caused the hard stop for me because I got this trusted computing group network equipment. I can't skip it. If you could shift by another week again, I could start joining Seabor calls in the future, and that yes. would be really nice. Yes, we'll, we'll um, definitely. So I, it's just one, but I maybe you know it might help a few other people attend. I don't know. Anyway, we'll definitely look into it. Plea. Yes, thank you, Ira. Actually, that was. Um, I mean, we scheduled these meetings also with uh, Core mm -hmm. and Ace. Uh, not to right. overlap, and actually we this then it was the last interim if we cancel the next one, and we have to reschedule the next series of interims. And I don't remember now if Core has already fixed theirs. No, but I think it now they they have theirs on Thursday, so they wouldn't overlap with us anymore. Um, um, so I think there is no problem with that. I will contact you to make sure that we don't uh, overlap again. And also, I guess, depending on uh, the new co-chair, we might need to move. I don't know. This time worked well, but let's see. It's yeah. not sure that it will stay at this time. And we can talk about- Also, if, if it yeah. moved an hour, if it, if it moved an hour later at this time, that would also be a time that I actually have free because it's lunch for me. <laughs> okay, okay. That's good to know. But I, I was thinking accounting of for uh, Ira accounting for, I guess this week you're free because Europe and time zone. Yes. Region. Yes. Right. I okay. uh, Right. I just, you know what? I just said that wrong. If it moved an hour later, but we had both moved our times. Yes, that would be okay because then it would be back to 11 a.m. Central Europe and 11 a.m. Whatever. It would be back to 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern. 12 o'clock U.S. Eastern is free. 1 o'clock U.S. Eastern is never free for me. Okay. I, point, I might just Michael. do another another doodle yeah. poll um, before we schedule the next yeah. series of interims. But this was Great. the last one for now. Yeah. Um, 
and we probably won't I'm thinking if we will resume before um, the new year, but maybe not. So we'll see. I'll make sure to uh, to um, ping you, Ira, before we we decide to set the, on the same um, time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And on that. I think we can close the meeting. Thank you so much for calling in and um, talk to you at ICF 109. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. See you then. Bye-bye. See you uh, all in Bangkok.